special conversation that we are going to have with the person. Um, and once again, let me introduce her. Uh, she is uh, Sujitra Narayan. Uh, she is an educator for uh, special and challenged children. And also she's been working for the past 35 years, uh, you know, helping people to come out of trauma and other uh, pop, uh, problems. She's also an enhanced trained uh, trainer and she's also a visiting member of uh, Harvard University for the past uh, 15 years to learn about the new methodologies and techniques on how to help, you know, disabled children to lead a normal life. And she also learns about mental health. So today, on our conversation, we are going to talk about um, mental health, a good mental health on quarantine days. So let me welcome her to, to the conversation. Hi, ma'am. Th thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining in today. I'm really happy to have you here. Um, uh, yes. So uh, let's get into the topic. Uh, so we all are going through a very uh, uncertain uh, time, uh, especially uh, with the, you know, with the influence and COVID-19, and everybody is quarantined, and self-isolating themselves, and it's it's something that we haven't done ever before. So it's something new to us. So when I talk about this, the first thing that comes to my mind is fear, the word, because that's the word that's, you know, uh, within everybody's mind and uh, uh, it could be of many reasons because, uh, you know, when you turn on the TV, the first thing you see is, uh, you know, 90 new cases, 100 new cases and uh, not just that, uh, 700 deaths in Italy and other places and that's so fearing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you exclude the privileged section of the society, the other section of the society is having fear about financial crisis too. Because uh, mm -hmm. there's no job, we couldn't go. So how can we take away the fear and how can we bring control to our mind? Uh, how can we make a mind more strong at this time? Um, actually, fear and the right natural. I don't think it's something that uh, we need to be ashamed of. Because I think that's uh, by denying that there is fear is also going to create a more problem for us because we then try to pretend to be something we are not and that's more difficult uh, to be. Uh, so, uh, especially when it is something that we don't know about, right? The whole world is still trying to figure out what is going on. So, it may not be really what's uh, or uh, it's not like it's only in one part of the world or something like that. So everybody is trying to figure out what to do about it. And we are all, that is perhaps a controlling factor that everybody is going through that and we are not alone in it. So there has to be um, a general uh, wave of understanding and a general better solution that can come up very soon because the whole world is trying to find solutions. I think that's one way to control that, that saying that there will be something positive because everybody is trying to find a solution to this. <clears throat> then uh, uh, if we have to look at something positive, we can say that perhaps China started earlier but they seem to have come out of it in some sort of a way. So maybe we are coming out of it in a short time. So it's not that it's going to be forever and forever, it just, it does seem very odd to people who are working every day outside of the home to be cooked up inside the house and have to do things from home. And uh, there could be some who feel that I'm doing physical activities and I'm not able to do that anymore like in terms of work because I know my um, gardener asked me like uh, I can't handle this, I can't sit at home because I'm used to physical work. So the thing is, to each one of us will have to find some solution uh, to that in terms of how can we best make use of our time. And I think we will discuss that as we go along um, because that's one way to take fear out of our minds. Important thing at this point is to follow the guidelines that the WHO and all the doctors and everybody is giving in terms of how to keep ourselves clean, healthy, Keep washing our hands to uh, make sure that we don't go out 
unnecessarily or we stay within our home so that we don't attract the infection and we don't spread it around also because even if we are not infected we could be carriers so that could be another way and that way we can be more um, comfortable with the idea that yes if, if I don't go out if the chance of infection is less so then the fear need not be that much what then would happen uh, the other thing is uh, the government has given guidelines uh, especially in Kerala and I am sure the world over the world joined various other guidelines I mean uh, numbers are there where you can call uh, there is a Visha helpline uh, in Kerala which people can call and say you can have to win to this difficulty and they can be subscribed and subscribed Disha helpline right so there is a Disha helpline in Kerala which is set up by the government so you can actually uh, call up and you know uh, if, if you are having any difficulty you can contact them yeah yeah and I can give some more link I can give some more link into okay. line
mind or if you're going to be sick then you're going to be I think that's not a nice thing to do. Um, and uh, you also have these, uh, they could be moody complaint because they're not used to being indoors all the time. Uh, and at that time, you know, it's very easy to indulge them and take that out of any time, which may not be the good thing for them in the long run. And uh, if there is a lot of people who says, for any child, too much of any time is not good. Any age. And uh, so, while technology is useful, uh, I think it's nice to rotate it. It's good to have uh, a routine. Uh, in school, they do a timetable. First period is in class, second period. So, they, are, they know what's going to happen. It's very comfortable to know that, okay, next period I have to. Monday, I have to do these things. Tuesday, I have to do these things. So if we can create the timetable for them for the week and have them activities, which includes things like uh, uh, doing suit you know, helping around the house, whether whether it is for cleaning, you know, the making their bed, um, cleaning, uh, you know, even their own routine of cleaning, you know, not just because you are at home to do it at any time. No, make a timetable so that. Uh, they also feel that their routine is going on. When moving school days, they put up at every day. So it's nice to have that routine. Set up a timetable for each day. Uh, include activities like outdoor chores. Uh, in, uh, you know, it might be helping in cutting the vegetables. It can be making a juice. Making, have a recipe for the day that they can participate in. They not in a whole thing, but they can participate in something. Um, include fun things like um, coloring of craft. Um, so there are a lot of ideas for crafts uh, on various channels. So that can be one part of the timetable. When uh, include some active learning time where they are not shut away from some general awareness and myth of um, there is National Geography, which gives a lot of good. In, I mean, new, uh, good ideas and good information they can get about the nature and about the world around them, whether it's places or animals or plants or whatever. And there is also, um, there are lots of other links which we can also share later, which they can use. It's not very important to have some time set apart for physical activity. And uh, so within the house, what kind of physical activity I think yoga is very easily done in a small space. So for having a routine where the exercises can be done within that space. Um, another nice thing to do in small children, um, they can create a, a, a book in which they put one object. A picture or maybe an object or something like that. If it's an older child, they can write about uh, uh, write about an object or a town that they over the So it becomes like an essay, and then at the end of two or three weeks, you have a nice book of memory of each okay. day. Uh, is it just like a diary, or is it something like a. Um, no, it can be a diary, but it can be visual. It can be. Uh -huh, visual um, with pictures. Can, yeah, yeah okay. it, it, it can be something where they can paint things in, you know, mm -hmm. with its little kids. So it can be a print, it can be a tone, it can be what is the memory, you know, for where did they get it from, it can be you know, something like that. And uh, then the other important thing is to find family. Like where the whole family sits together and does some fun activity. It could be snakes and ladder, it could be Ludo, it could be combat, it could be you know, some memory game. You just fun things, even things like name play, animal thing, you know, uh -huh. some, something as simple as that, like right? uh, which children in school play, modern process. You know, just something where everybody sits to sit together and plays something. Yeah. So it just creates a lot more movement. But having the routine is very important. Yeah, the routine is the most important thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. having a good routine for the children. 
Okay. Um, and uh, the next question is about the next vulnerable category of society that is uh, very difficult to you know uh, to make them understand because that's between uh, I think between the young adults like the 18 to like 21, 80 to 21 years of age group. Uh, so they do have uh, uh, the the authority of you know having a driving license. They do have a driving license. They might have a vehicle, a two wheeler. Uh, so these uh, these um, young adults like who have just come out of the teenage uh, and uh, they uh, they would they they are very used to going outside, hanging out with friends, and it's very frustration frustrating for them. Maybe even more than children uh, for them to be inside the house. So they might be on the road and even now the police uh, and the public control is finding it difficult to um, uh, you know, make them sit at home, they are confiscating the two wheelers uh, and everything of that, all vehicles. So how can we make them, uh, how can we educate them like in a way that it's important, it's not just for you but it's for everybody that uh, you have to be inside the house and maintain social distance. Um, one of the things was actually um, respecting their individual freedom. Very important to respect their individual freedom. The parent or the family who will take to it. It can also be a part, it could be um, just connecting with friends, you know, allowing that to happen, just yeah. maybe like how we are doing now. Uh, we always take our own friends in different ways. Uh, 
Uh, the other thing is to be moody and stupid, not interacting too much, not looking to do things. Uh, so these are all the signs that they might be going through. Which they may not be talking about, but these are signs that they might be going through some turmoil within. And uh, uh, rather than finding fault and saying, why are you feeling like this? Why are you doing that? I think it's nice to appreciate the time when they are not moving down. Appreciate it. Say, hey, thank you for helping. Thank you for whatever. You know, you will think by making those observations. But at the same time, making a note and seeing if these behaviors are continuing for a while, it's not like one day or it's going on for a couple of days. Nice to reach out for help, and uh, uh, there are again many times where professionals can actually help the parent um, on how to deal with the individual situation rather than general with the material that can do the process and how to deal with it. So, I think that's the best way to uh, do that rather than you know, I mean, the general things are to. to uh, be aware that everybody can do these kind of situations. Like to me, trauma brings out a lot of reactions in human beings and this is part of it. And the other is to rather than focus on the negative, focus on all the problems that we do. And appreciating that and if the situation continues for long, then speak outside the question. Okay. Like if the earlier we can be doing some contact. Now, as we said, is looking at about my previous data. Yes. So, many other numbers that we can get or contact lines, we can share those. Okay, okay. So, uh, so that that would be applicable only for people in India or anywhere else, uh, the, the my three and. I think uh, at the of the world, they have a client data. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. This situation does work to be tight and you can certain okay. help them. Uh, yeah, so I think it's nice to, depending on which country they are, I think if they have access to internet, they can Google and find and whatever we can uh, help if we know the country they are in. And it's not sometimes country, it's state specific, it's region specific, like, yeah. So there, might, there will be lots of people reaching out at this time. I think that's useful. And it is a fairly con fairly conference, fairly uh, communication. I'm sure they first take the call and then back to uh, something closer to them to give them guidelines. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, so I just like to bring up this uh, inst uh, incident that happened like two days ago. Like we we saw a man committing a suicide. Uh, because um, uh, he was an alcoholic and uh, he couldn't, you know, uh, get access to alcohol at this time. And uh, we also heard the government uh, today uh, that uh, will be selling out alcohols for people uh, with prescription because uh, consumption of alcohol has turned into an addiction uh, in, in literally in our state. And that addiction is like uh, it's a very serious matter. And uh, for the person who's going through that, it's uh, very tough for them. And especially uh, in rural areas, you know, when the shops are shut down, uh, there's no access to alcohol or cigarettes or any anything of that. So that leads, that pro, uh, gives an addiction to you. So these kind of people, so they have come to an extent of suicide, uh, and it's almost uh, very much clear by the ha what happened two days ago. And uh, uh, so, what can relatives or the family members do to help them? not to slip into that extent of suicide or what can we provide a moral support to that particular person at this time? Uh, I'm, I'm sure family that it may be people when they the family members would have would have a clear idea of their uh, addiction or their need for the instance. Uh, it's not going to be something new that they are going to be in them. And they can they see if that withdrawal symptoms like uh, it could be again anger or it could be shivering, um, you know, and then like dance, shivering and things like that. So making a note of all these things 
and in the rural area, there is a public health center where people are available in Kendra. There are people like Asha workers and Rumiya public health workers and things like that. Is to I think I think the Villa helpline is going to be um, one source of help. Uh, on one side, doctors say that this is a good time uh, to get me admitted. Now that if they say it can be we don't have the substance, then we can get me admitted. But that's easier said than done. Uh, so it's also nice to um, reach out to helpline. And as for the family, I think it's nice to be understanding. I think it's to be empathetic and understanding, and that's important. Um, rather than finding fault with the person and reaching out to the person, because it is a mental health condition. It's not, uh, like you said, it's an addiction. It's not. Uh, something that they are doing voluntarily, something that uh, is happening in voluntarily within them. So it's nice to be empathetic and then uh, observe the signs and if it goes on for too long, then reach out to people. So reach out to help, help clients and uh, inform them to do, um, the situation with me help. So I think that because uh, more than that, I wouldn't be able to add to that. Yes, uh, that's the like the solution. Like, uh, yes. Um, um, so uh, another question we uh, like uh, that I would like to ask you is about uh, th there. There might be people who's already uh, you know on medicines or on depression and uh, anxiety who are already on the medicines and. Uh, this type of uh, circumstances would just increase. There's a probability of increase in their illness. Uh, so, uh, someone just asked me whether ex does exercise actually reduce the depression? Exercise is a wonderful um, uh, movement to be had in one's life because one hour of exercise will actually keep the thing getting it down. Not just this doing something like doing something so you can actually sweat it out and it doesn't require a lot of pain you can uh, even do it doesn't have to be like jogging for an amount or something like that it can be within the house and that's why even things like yoga and work that come in useful there are lots of apps today where you can put music and do some dance uh, which gives you that pain exercise where they tell you what step to do, so you just have to follow those steps and do that. It's called dance exercise and uh, things like that. Actually, what it does is it releases uh, a hormone called endorphin, and endorphin the feel good hormone. So they make the content feel good at the end of it. And at least for a certain amount of time, that we're feeling no depression goes away and there is a surge of energy, a surge of um, feeling happy and good for a certain amount of time and when that becomes a habit, then you know, it, 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 it will be able to every day, you know, find time. So that's why again I'm stressing on the routine where you know you build it into your routine every day make sure that it happens. Uh, I think that just makes it, it can be fun and it can also take off the feeling of low, it can be a blood circulation, in metabolism, in the end of the day, everyone feels good, you know, yes. physically also you feel good. Um, and I know for a fact that there are many youngsters who have, uh, you know, when they reluctant into exercise and at the same time at the end of it, the end of the week saying, hey, I'm feeling really much better. Mm, yeah, once they start going and they could start feeling the difference, like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's very healthy. So it, it is healthy for uh, for the person who asked me that question. Uh, so uh, how, to, uh, so the next question is how to help and calm friends, like for example, um, so let me take my case, my parents are brought. And uh, so 
they are in, in, in a different country and uh, my relatives are in some other country. So everybody, even a single family might have all its members in different, different parts of the world. So, uh, and different, uh, all the world's, most of the countries are affected. Uh, and uh, we are, in a way, we are, um, we are more anxious about them uh, in some way or the other. And uh, so how can we actually, uh, you know, support someone who's far away from us? Uh, how could we calm them, help them calm them or give a mutual support to each other if you are, you know, separated by a long distance? Um, yeah. um, I think the most important thing is connect with them. Uh, and like we are doing now, uh, while texting and mental illness is me, it's nice to see face to face all. Just makes it so much more. Um, you think that the person who will perform and you know, with you and you will love. It helps a little bit more to have that contact uh, and if, uh, again talk to them as often as possible uh, because then uh, in that communication, the verbal face to face conversation, um, it just helps to then help to connect a lot more. And when we talk, very important for all the negative things that are happening around us. Uh, not to talk about who not to and so not well and so on so well. Having the problem, mother and problem, and it's important to focus on that. And little positive thing, uh, because that's the only thing to be us to. And I'm reminded of uh, a movie, which won an Oscar, you know, which is about being in Holocaust times, where is this uh, father and his son are in a. Uh, I mean, it's a movie, but it's about being in kind of one of those, um, quad, I mean, like uh, army barracks, then they are held, and uh, they don't know the I mean, like a little son and the father, and the father comes back, he, he's been the worst around, and the family is inside the barracks, the father comes back, and then we meet the very positive story to the son about all the imaginary things that you know can happen outside and the son imagines that's what the outside is he's not able to come out because if he comes out he could end up in some other situation like the white kid or whatever but the father could to hide inside the parents and you know every day and the whole positivity See them through if they are, you know, the whole, you know, till the Americans come and rescue them, you know, at the end of it. So, I, you know, it, that's a film, but there are people who have actually outlived for the world. And we are so lucky that we are not in that kind of a situation. And so, it's not like important to focus on all the positive things. Positive things. Look for people who have skills in and make an edit. Make, make video yeah. Yeah. And I also think that too much of news, watching news will also make, uh, you know, create a unwanted anxiety. Like if you just, you know, follow the news almost all the time and uh, mm. especially people with big mm -hmm. cuts. Uh, yeah. So much of social media, all the negative thing, COVID this, COVID that, you shut off the news. <laughs> There is enough, everybody knows now what's happening. There is no need to keep learning in different ways of what's happening in the world. Um, one can share happy things that they would watch a night movie, watch a night music program, watch a night performance. You know, um, it just makes this living in your home. You can watch when you have to pay um, hundreds of rupees. What something you can watch that sitting at home and you know, enjoy that, um, and those are things which you can share with everybody. Yes, so we watch a bit of positive content every day, not just the news, uh, depressing news that's happening. Just a, a positive dose of uh, you know vibe into your life every day. It's important. Um, so um, next one is a very uh, a very. Uh, 
serious situation. Like I, I kind of like felt like there was an image of a child inside a hospital, uh, which came from Wuhan, uh, inside the hospital in a glass uh, window, and the the medical um, uh, the expert uh, he's standing outside the glass and looking at the, the child is actually crying for you know to take him uh, or hug him or but they, they are not possible to do that because. Uh, he's infected, the child is infected. So, uh, separation of the child from the parent during this uh, uh, this pandemic and uh, it's it's very strange but at the same time it's very much necessary for the child's health. Uh, and uh, if the child is not infected, it's important for his health. If the parent is not infected, it's important for their health. So, getting your child separated from the, from the parent, how can we, uh, you know, uh, act in the situation like in a better way? Uh, one is to beat the child if the adult around the child over it is can be positive because children are like sponges they absorb whatever they see if they see sadness in here they absorb sadness in here if they see positivity they absorb that so if we can, adults around them can be positive and say that hey, we are going to come up with this and like the whole thing of being a warrior and saying like how you fight the warrior so you know they, they have the secret power and when do things like that and get them to him and then to do some you know, mythological superpower kind of thing. Uh, I think it's also good for me to have a lot of art activities where they can do you know, um, if they can't draw, someone can draw and draw an image for them and they can color it and say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of, and how are they doing? So they can make up a story of how to, to, to fight the, uh, the invisible enemy and you know how, how they're going to save, they going to save them, they're going to save their parents or whoever it is. And, um, and, uh, and they can be even stronger by the way, so they can even start them with one small image and then each day they can bigger and bigger and say yes, now we are strong. And so small things like that, I mean, I think yeah, it's important to um, keep the child mentally occupied in different ways. So activity that can take, take their mind off with clear uh, some situation. So giving them some activities and uh, being very positive around them. Uh, again, I'm reminded of this uh, character called Patch Adams, uh, <laughs> where the doctor goes into uh, it's a movie again, but it's the real thing that happened in New York, where the doctor goes into cancer ward and act like a clown, just to cheer up for the children and be positive. Yeah. 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 So, I think there's lots that we can do to keep children positive, but the adult being positive. The adult around has to be positive. The child absorbs that positivity. Mm -hmm. yes. He's more secure. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, now we have like the four response question that we got from others. Uh, so we move on to that last four question. Uh, so, um, uh, so this is about a person uh, who have written that uh, um, that person cannot sleep well. Uh, uh, usually, she uh, that person has a, a problem of insomnia. But now, uh, after getting into the quarantine and self isolation, it's uh, much more. S maybe uh, what uh, that person thing is. Uh, uh, Maybe because of stress, well, unknowing stress, you know, stress can happen without even uh, a reason. But uh, so that, uh, what could be the reason? Any 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 techniques or methods to adapt a good sleep during this time for people with insomnia? Yeah, um, one of the things is uh, we can do it as an instrument to help women like have a warm heart. Just move forward to try to do better. Uh, have a maybe half a glass of warm milk, something warm that you do with the spoon, help to um, uh, go to sleep. Uh, another thing is to uh, 
get into some physical religion, putting it help to have some, you know, chant to think to themselves, you know, that can help them take their mind off the school children as they keep uh, chanting them, you know, many people who think. But because they believe that particular deity, Uber elders, that also brings a good spin within them. If they, in, I mean, there is this whole uh, notion of pumping sheep, <laughs> you know, like, <clears throat> so anything repetitive can give me a thought. But if it's a thought that one can relate to, you think it, it gives the inner strength. And that's why I said if it's a charm, which, which is whichever uh, religion they may belong to, a prayer or a charm, whatever, just and to stay focused, opening from the many thoughts and you do something to us and when it's relative to the smith, it's those are things to come. With it going beyond the point, with affecting them, make something that may need to be um, looked at more seriously, where they can see help from outside <coughs> and say that they yeah, have I mean, maybe, you know, sometimes uh, the medical personnel will give the reactions which will be for a very short minute. Once the situation goes, back, goes off, then they might get back into a better looking and better quality in where they are able to do better. So, you know, I think small things they can do that when it's too much to handle, then it's time to be professional. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's, that was a helpful thing. It's basically about um, yeah, doing something like repetitive or chanting uh, a prayer or having a half glass of milk or uh, things like that. Having a warm bath before going to bed is definitely going to help you uh, with getting a good, better sleep. So, um, the next question. One more thing, yeah. one more thing that things could not be on social media for at least half an hour before sleep. Because all the conversations that are happening can churn the mind and you know, um, get people into a very agitated frame of mind and not be able to So not to be on the social media for at least half an hour before you go to bed and uh, it's really important. Uh, so uh, next is a person. Um, uh, 25 years old. Can I, yes. can I just, sorry, reading a book for those who like to read. Yeah, reading, reading a book. book. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, uh, that can be done before bed, right? Uh, just, uh, does it have to be half an hour before or like just uh, immediately? No, you can have a book by the bed, so you can you know, try reading the book. And you might, you won't finish the book, but it's okay. You know, read as much as you can and you will drift off to sleep and put your book aside and yeah. That's a good technique. So if you love reading book, read a book. Uh -huh. um, so next is a person now, uh, 25 years old, and uh, the person uh, is like um, uh, almost bored with the daily routine of uh, you know staying home, uh, like uh, watching TV, uh, you know video calling. That's that's done. Like that's uh, almost boring now. Then what are the other things that we could do? That's the, that's what uh, that person wants to know. Um, one thing to go back into my childhood and look at what were the hobbies that we had. Uh, did we like to uh, pick up some pebbles? Did we like to collect something? You know, I mean, like, did we like to collect stamps? Maybe and we have one stack of stamps which we have not sorted out. Did we have uh, something else, some collections that we um, have, you know, which we have never looked at and we would like a hobby that we had but we never went back to. This is a nice time to get back to that hobby. If there is no hobby, it's very easy to learn something. Today there are a lot of online tutorials to learn something new. And if one doesn't have to be the best, the sad thing is in India or in Asia, we always have this thing that whatever we do, we have to be the best. We have that notion. Don't have to be the best. Like, uh, 
when uh, the electric bike was made, there were 1,000 failures. <laughs> That's what they said. So the failure was to make the electric bike, not the success. To, uh, it, it's important to fail and not do good, but just learn something. You know, just just for the fun of it, can be learning a language. Yes. Can be learning, can be fixing a few words in a language, can be learning, if somebody likes cooking, learning a new recipe, if somebody likes music, learning to play an instrument, there are lots of online instructions. Mm -hmm. Just learning to draw, I mean, some people say I couldn't draw it straight and now I've learned to do things. Lots of things with online tutorials, free, where you don't have to pay, and that's very nice nowadays that there is all this uh, technology is helping, you know, access to many things. And for the those who are academically inclined, there are courses, of course there are as courses which you can learn from the best in the world and even from Harvard and Stanford and things like that without paying for it unless you want a certificate. Because if you want a certificate, then you pay a small fee for the books. And they are the same courses that are being offered in the active classes. So they are not like watered down versions of the mm -hmm. it's, it's something that people are academically and openly interested in. Yeah, learn a new language or uh, learn something new uh, or go back to your old memories and uh, you know go back to the whole hobbies that collecting pebbles and so on or learn something new uh, online courses from Harvard and Harvard and Stanford is happening. Mm -hmm. It's C O U R S E R V Coursera. Okay. And so you can get to the group that you with the academically oriented, not uh, not necessarily fun things, but people who want to pursue academic topics can do that too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a helpful one. Um, so next, uh, two more questions, ma'am. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. The next one is. Um, the person is 22 years old, but uh, you know, uh, a single child. So it's basically a different situation if you don't have a sibling doing self-isolation. And um, like, so how can a single child uh, find? I think most of the previous uh, methods would help them, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That we discussed mm -hmm. earlier. So I, I think that we could just skip on this question because it's going to be the same thing. Yeah, yeah repetitive. Yeah. So we can skip on that question because you could do the same thing which we discussed before and it's going to be really helpful. Uh, to you. And the last is about a mother uh, who's worried about the child uh, being too much on electronics uh, because uh, they have no other option. Now. Uh, even they are having they are having the school uh, uh, class classrooms online now. So especially in the Middle East and so on. So. Uh, yeah. Is it okay to give the electronic gadgets to them? Uh, yes, uh, we did this earlier, but I'm going back on this. Like um, excessive uh, use of gadget can dull the mind uh, or create problem. So it's important to make the routine have a timetable. Find a timetable to do the school a time to do the school activity. Find time to do other things which are not related to the screen. So reducing screen time, uh, even though school could think up, it is not for the whole day. So there is no need to uh, imagine that one thing can do. So if we set a certain time where things are, if not just in the middle east, even in India now, probably schools are going for like. Um, classes and it's not through the day, they can some time and so we have to figure out the time when we can get that done. So having the routine, um, the timetable, like, this is the time I'm going to do my school work, this is the time for my fun, this is the time for my family time, this is my time for exercise, you know, having that on a day-to-day -day basis and that I think will really help. It's a thing they're going back to the routine. So we can limit the screen time, but at the same time, you can be a positive. You screen time, of course. Yes. Yeah. 
so I think we have almost covered all the questions now. And uh, uh, before like, we wind up the conversation, uh, would you like to give any kind of suggestion or advice uh, uh, to the views that we have today? Um, like on what's going to happen in the future, <laughs> like in the next couple of days, how could you take care of yourself? And any, any uh, note of advice? Uh, uh, first, top thing is follow the guidelines that uh, the government, the real show, many in quite keep healthy and safe. Uh, second, to find a routine because staying the truth of the time can be a very calamity time. So, find a routine, make a routine for each one of the, each member of the family. So, each one has a routine and you know, do that, stay positive, exercise, <laughs> be happy, smile, connect with friends, connect with friends, connect with family, <laughs> you know, um, do face to face, fun day. I think it's a whole help. And think of, don't connect with too much of um, the negative view. You know, shut, shut oneself from the um, negative views. Just if it's too much on the, the uh, groups, you can get out of the group for a time. Where people are moving, moving, get out of it, stay positive. Yes. So I think uh, we could wind up the conversation now. I'm really thankful to you for being uh, here, joining us, joining me today because. It's, uh, it's really helpful that we could give a piece of like, this is all we could do being inside the home to help others. And I'm sure most of you might have taken away something from this conversation. And uh, uh, we are glad to do that. And thank you so much, ma'am, once again for being here. And I really... Uh, thank you and happy to be part of this. We share some main which viewers can use maybe past books on I'll, I'll, I'll tell them about that. Okay, I'll definitely share them about that. Uh, okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So, we do have uh, some materials uh, available, for, especially for children, because uh, uh, it's, it's an entertaining material, so we could, you know, uh, use them uh, to create a very good uh, mental health uh, in a very uh, positive, positive way uh, because it's up to the parents now because uh, they are, the children are with you most of the time so I'm pretty much sure that uh, articles and materials are really helpful for all of them. So if you feel that you want to have more information and resources about uh, these articles, just send me a message, I will email it to you and I will also email the details of her and her institute and uh, how uh, they manage to do all these wonderful works across the world uh, and uh, that, is, that is going to help us in a way. So I hope all of you will have a great day ahead. Uh, Thank you so much for joining in today and uh, it's my pleasure to share whatever thing I can. So uh, thank you. Bye.